Today we begin the new year on the phenomenal plane. I propose that we begin it with a day of silence. and inwardness and return to the basics of the alchemy of Sat Yoga. And make sure that the mind has been curbed from its egoic tendencies of externalization and diversion and forgetfulness of the self. And by diligently remaining in the practice of silence and presence and surrender, the ego tendencies will be purified and burned and dissolved. And what will remain will be the pure awareness the pure awareness emptied of all of the obscurations, the ignorance, the illusions, so that it becomes a fit vessel for receiving the higher wisdom, the higher illumination. At the core of our being, once the Consciousness has been emptied out of the egoic levels of veiling of our being. Every being will discover that within there is a powerful light and source of love, divine love. Love that expresses itself not as desire but as fullness but as overflowing creativity and joy and empowerment. We want to establish ourselves in that core of our being so that the light is always shining, never covered, never forgotten. And we want to make sure that that light is becoming ever stronger, more pure, more clear, more in attunement with the source of the light, the source of consciousness, the supreme beingness from which we all derive our lives and our consciousness at an individual level. So really give yourself permission to focus on that inward core and invite the Supreme Presence to abide with you, in you, and as you without internal duality, without a sense of an ego mind, but simply that pure, silent presence that is always accurately attuned to what is needed on the phenomenal plane and accurately attuned to the supreme intelligence from which all of our creative capacities come. And in this way, through self-discipline, this will become your second nature, your new nature, as a beacon unto the world of divine light and love and healing. And 
you will be a living temple of supreme beauty, consciousness, and healing power to whom others will come in order to receive the grace that you have given your life to become an embodiment of. And in that way, all karmic debts will be paid off. And one's trajectory of development will bring you to liberation and to the fullness of God consciousness. It is through that devotion to making the mind a fit vessel and vehicle of the supreme luminous presence and our heart, the embodiment of love and grace that will complete our journey in this phenomenal plane and enable us to graduate from this school and abide in that eternal light and bliss that is transcendent of all worlds. This is the historic moment in which at the end of a long line of incarnations, in which we have journeyed through a golden age, a silver age, a copper age, and the horror and drudgery of a Kali Yuga Iron Age, we return to that period of a Sangam Yuga, a confluence age, where the original tribe of beings, fallen angels, restore their wings and learn again to fly. And this time to fly beyond the boundaries of the cosmos into the infinite, luminous, celestial realms from which we came originally. And to bring that celestial grace to this world so that others will be prepared for a similar journey into the infinite. We have a job to do within the phenomenal plane of cleansing our planet that we have been accomplices in ravishing and ravaging. And we also have a role within the cosmic community of beings. And it is communion with those intelligences also that we are being prepared for. To overcome the provincialism of the human species so that we can take our place as citizens of the cosmos. But beyond that, we have a role in the celestial economy of the multiverse, in which only the most balanced and empowered centers of intelligent presence can ground and stabilize a cosmos and that requires all of the wisdom of all of the experience that you have gained in many, many lifetimes, even if that has been forgotten. All of the reservoirs of the noosphere, of the Akashic records, all of the database of God's mind is available to you when you are ready to know how to make use of it. 
And it is this wisdom that we have received our consciousness of the type that we have that is designed to be able to function literally as gods. But to fulfill that mission, we must be willing to abandon and outgrow the ego mode of consciousness that is only the larval stage of our development and take our place in that realm of divine beings in which there is no longer any maya, no illusion, no negativity, no dark side, no dark nights of the soul, no soul, just the purity of that eternal power that is trans-individual and therefore is liberated from all need for reincarnation or learning at an individual level. It is now a cosmic level that becomes the curriculum of our learning endeavor as we become apprentices to God in all of those higher functions of creation, sustenance, destruction, and transformation of universes. May we be fully open and ready and humble enough to learn and to grow and to let go of all that we thought we were in the past, of all the false ideas, of all the limited ways of thinking, and become open to that consciousness that contain the ultimate paradoxes that are at the basis of the mind of the creative power that brought all of this into being. Our capacity for that adaptation to a way of being that is inconceivable to the ego mind because it operates on a logic that is completely different from the two-valued logic of true or false that we are <coughs> used to, that can contain an infinity of infinity of realities simultaneously. This is reflected in the development now of the quantum computer in science that is able to process because of the transposition the superposition of particles in different states simultaneously, it is able to compute in ways that no other computer that's limited to one or zero can possibly attain. It is literally a quantum leap into an infinite potentiality of understanding and of the manipulation of the elements of reality in order to bring the highest expression of truth and beauty, goodness and love into every world in which we travel. And it is this capacity for infinite consciousness that we must now cultivate through our devotion to becoming those models, those inheritors of the divine presence that we were born to become. But if we have not completed the initial stages of purification, 
and of elimination of the ego, then that must be our focus until we have burned away all of those final traces, whether traces of master's discourse or traces of negative self-image or traces of habit patterns of forgetfulness or whether they're still our super ego attacking voices in our consciousness or any sort of duality that divides us against ourself and occludes the light and the power of our being. Our focus must be to slay the demons, to purify the temple, to bring that ultimate silence and emptiness into the consciousness so that the supreme light will enter the temple and sanctify it. And once this phase has been reached, all the rest will unfold spontaneously because the Satguru will have been established within. May you take this opportunity with utmost seriousness for all who are here have received the highest grace and the energy field will promote and enable the achievement of what your ego might consider impossible or even wish to be impossible because it implies its death as a structure of consciousness and a rebirth into that unimaginable power and luminosity that is the basis of all of the religions that have been founded on this planet. Now the fulfillment of those prophecies, promises, and predications must be accomplished. The promissory note that is the basis of our right to incarnation must now be paid through the accomplishment of ego death and rebirth as manifestations of the supreme unified field of consciousness incarnated in perfect attunement in every vehicle. The grace of God, the love, and the intention of God for you to be successful in this inner quest is here and is with you and supporting you. You will receive all the help that you need to accomplish the purification of the heart, soul, and the mind. If only you will surrender to God to receive that help. And the work will be done very quickly. The more one-pointed you are, that this is the meaning and the purpose and the next stage of the development of your life. When this is clear and you have decisively committed yourself to ego death and transcendence, it will be achieved easily and naturally, for it is our birthright. The only obstacle is the double-headed ego that wants to remain bound to its petty concerns and at the same time receive the grace 
of that supreme power that is egoless. And one must kill off that head that is facing the wrong way and speaking the wrong words so that your mind and your eye is single and your heart is single in its dedication and love for the Supreme One. This love will bring the final freedom and completion of our, our work here and our journey on this planet. The force is with you, but may you be with the force and the grace of that power will lead you to the infinite light.